Hi, I'm Cerise again, and I'm back uh, to do the third trimester. Uh, Tasha's behind the camera today. I uh, just wanted to quickly go through some cueing for our posture. And right now I'm sitting on the bolster, and this is just allowing myself to sit up nice and tall. And I just want to um, bring our awareness to our our, our belly, okay, and it is at its widest now. Uh, so everything is obviously going to be wide-legged. Um, unless you are having some instability and aches at the lower part of your groin, um, then we will be doing a particular um, clip for uh, uh, all those stabilizing positions but for now we're just going to focus on that actually not being the case and um, looking at how we are holding our posture so firstly being on the bolster is just allowing me to sit up a little bit taller um, if you are having any trouble with your knees it might be easier for you to to sit just cross uh, not even cross-legged but just having your legs sitting out um, wide and that's just for us to start um, just quickly in regards to how our spine goes you'll notice that at the um, as we go along in our pregnancy that um, natural uh, lower back curve that's happening is becoming more and more exacerbated so what's happening there in the front of your stomach is you're actually having a lot of pull on those ligaments um, and and we're wanting to instead having the baby that's you know would be forward in your womb you're wanting to actually use the cradle of your pelvis to to sit the baby and what this means is that if you're actually looking in the mirror you're actually dropping your tailbone down and under and you're causing that real deep arch to just soften a little bit and to be more of a flat uh, a flat tight back in this scenario okay and it's going to look like you're not even um, as full as well and that's just protecting your groin and it's protecting your pelvis and it's protecting all of those ligaments okay so just be mindful of that so I'm going to just start warming up a little bit um, however your legs are comfortable we're going to move our shoulders just feeling that whole sensation of the shoulder blade going round and it is about this time that we will be feeling that extra pressure on all of our joints um, a couple of reasons for that it's the extra fluid that's building up um, and just being able to move like we we could at the start is probably a little bit um, a little bit taken back now taking a back seat okay and we're just moving those wrists again I did mention at the start uh, when we did the first and second trimester about um, how important it was to focus on your wrists and this could be something that you do uh, you know three or four times a day uh, particularly in the morning you'll notice a lot of clicking and just doing that before you're even waking up it's a good way just to get some of that fresh blood supply um, circulating around your body before you actually go to get up um, and that's also going to help with uh, blood pressure um, normalizing uh, to some degree um, with uh, before you hop up and um, alleviate any any unnecessary dizziness okay so we're just going to go the other way and it could be about now that we start incorporating it in with our breath so inhaling if you like on the going up and exhaling as you're going down but just following any breath sequence that's working for you today I don't want you to feel you have to do the inhale and the exhale the same way as I am uh, just follow a, a just a nice smooth flow so we're allowing those fingers to sprawl out wrists energy coming out through our wrists there just exacerbating that and clenching our fists in and opening our hands you might be finding that your arms are tired already so we're just going to crunch and open and this is just another energy releasing posture to do this is part of the Pawana Muktasana series one so all our joint mobility getting that fluid that synovial fluid in and around your joints is just going to be amazing for the bigger picture allowing your hands to come down 
okay? And we're just gonna settle down a little bit now and just spend a few moments connecting to your belly, okay? You might wanna place your hands on your belly and just bringing that attention back to the present moment, allowing yourself to be centered and settled and hopefully as comfortable as you can and just acknowledging this time that you're settling and you're taking the time for yourself and for baby is going to cause an amazing ripple effect and well-being for you and your baby. Maybe this is the first time that you've settled down today and actually been able to follow your breath. And naturally, as we focus on our breath, your breath starts to slow down and create a little bit more of a softer rhythm. If your nose isn't blocked, you might want to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And as you breathe in, your belly might be pushing away your hands. And as you breathe out, your stomach moves away from your hands. Just going to follow along for a few more breaths. And just trying to extend that out breath for a few more seconds. So you might be doing four, three, two, one, and then take another nice deep breath in through your nose, and then back out. Four, three, two, one. And just doing a really exacerbated and feel like you are blowing a ping pong ball across the floor. And we can incorporate in our pelvic floor muscles, this is the first time I've talked about it today, or in this pregnancy sequence, but it's this feeling of drawing up your, your pelvic floor, your bottom, um, and your, um, uterus is contracting and everything's getting drawn up as in like we were stopping ourselves from the flow of urine so just imagining that and it could feel a little bit odd if it's something that you haven't ever um, be become aware of but it is really helpful in repairing of um, the, uh, the, the vagina in any way um, after your delivery so taking a nice deep breath in again and drawing up the pelvic floor muscles and just slowly letting them release. It's the same as any movement with, uh, within yoga. You don't want to just let everything just drop out. Okay, we're going to go back to normal breath now. And we're just going to let in a few sighs and just really getting the energy from our throat activated. <sighs> Why we are doing these real audible sounds is helpful for us to connect to our own advocacy and making sure that we can sound out our needs. <sighs> and the sounds that we need to harness for uh, birth and delivery. And some of those sounds are gonna sound very deep and animal-like, and that's fine. Oh, just dropping it out. We're wanting to draw that energy really deep down into the lower chakras or just into the lower base of our energy here. And what you might notice when you do that is you take your energy away from your throat where it might be all high pitched and tension, you're wanting to ground down. So that's where that uh, train of thought comes from. All right, so we probably need to come out of this uh, kneeling pose, just bring out any blankets or bolsters 
and just bringing your legs out in front of you for a nice little stretch and just pulling out your flesh from under your sit bones so you're sitting on those two little points of your sit bones. If you do find it difficult to sit like this in an upright position without leaning forward, just use your blanket. Um, you might want to have a couple of blankets on hand and again just pulling the flesh out, drawing your toes up and we're just going to lift our hands up over our head. You might be choosing to inhale at this point, you don't need to look up at, at this stage and exhaling allowing the energy to come out. Inhaling, raising your hands up over the head if you want to look up you can and exhaling, raising your hands, letting your hands float down. One more time, inhaling up and exhaling down just bringing your feet a little bit to hip um, apart and allowing those big toes just uh, actually a little bit further than hip width and just allowing those toes to drop into one another this is part of the stabilizing um, sequence that we would be looking at but i'm just going to do this just to stretch out our feet anyway so we're just allowing our feet to float forward into a point and then bringing our feet back towards our shins for a flex and then going around for a nice little circle let's do three times on each the slower the better um, it's definitely not a race with our uh, joint warming sequences it's more having that awareness and connection with our breath so we might inhale while we're lengthening out our feet All right, bringing your legs up to maybe just a little bit out if it's feeling quite tight for you. And we're going to allow our legs to float like a butterfly. This is our Pona Titali, our lovely suppling for the hips uh, asana. Okay. If that's okay to cross your legs, just in an easy seated position, we're going to bring the left hand to the right and just place your right hand around the back of you. You might not be able to reach that today. This is another good reason to have a couple of bolsters on hand because you might want to just lift up with the bolster and just having your hand across your belly and maybe you're able to just touch your knee here or maybe you can go right round but I do encourage you not to push the stretch you might be feeling a lot of pulling on this side so really just coming back to wherever you need to to get a bit of a stretch here if you are feeling okay and it's not going into that pulling and tugging then that's fine we can look over our shoulder a little bit with our head and then incorporate in our eyes for an additional stretch Coming back to centre, just allowing yourself to settle down. It's like we're wringing out a towel. And then when we open the towel again, all the fresh blood supply comes through. So placing your right hand on your left, but wherever you are, because it will be the opposite, depending on how your brain works. So whatever side, swap it over, right hand on the left, and just using this back hand just to push yourself up. Okay, and just looking straight ahead, having your chin parallel to the mat. Take a nice deep breath in and out, just following a smooth breath sequence. And exhaling back to the center, just dropping our chin down to our chest. And exhaling, looking up, back to center, looking to the left back to center. You might choose to do this practice with your eyes closed or just your eyes softened just to allow yourself to become more in tune with your breath and being more inward and subtle as opposed to this whole outward expressive dynamic type thinking because we are coming to a time in the third trimester back to the center that uh, it is about tuning in a little bit more. We're going to concave our stomach and just draw that baby and your belly. You might prefer just to be thinking of it as your belly at this stage still and that's okay. Drawing the belly back and then we're going to let the belly float forward 
and now your chin to come up last and we're doing a little rocking motion now this is going to happen from your hips all right and we're just getting some mobility in the, the spine the spine is all about fluidity and it's also stability just feeling quite loose and light around your spine okay another two more here and just back to center lovely just coming around to your knees we're going to work our way up to this chair here hands underneath your shoulders knees underneath your hips we're going to push our head down push our belly up into the back of our spine and feeling that space being created in the back and across our shoulders having your fingers nice and wide just to draw out that energy or if you do have sensitive wrists already um, we can use the blanket okay so inhaling drawing the belly up and exhaling this time not like your traditional cat where we would actually drop into that lower back we just want to stay in a neutral spine okay so this is our resting pose inhaling belly up pushing the shoulder blades away and moving those shoulders down from your ears and exhale back to center let's do that another three times in your own time really feeling like we're tucking our tailbone under and flattening and lengthening that lower back and back to the center two more and again, this is an, another, the similar to what we were just doing, but um, in an all fours position. Okay, so coming back to kneeling and we're going to come straight up. So we're going to do this in a few stages. Okay, so we can have our hands and whenever you're in a lunge, you're going to be at the wider end of your mat and your hands are just going to come down to the mat on the inside part this time tuck your back foot under and we're going to do in a step step motion okay and just coming up really slowly having your head coming up last and bringing ourselves down into a squat only if you are not having any um, issues with veins popping up um, you could be swollen in this area anyway but just if there's any veins that are actually protruding you don't want to do any of the um, of these squatting type movements but we're going to use the chair as support because it's all about being supported and we're going to drop our self down onto our bolster and just using our elbows to push out our knees and our knees to push into our elbows so there's this whole push and pull thing that's happening here and let's just settle into a little bit of a breath taking a couple of deep breaths in for a count of four and then exhaling out for a count of five four three two one and if you want to just go along now in your own breath time and maybe just counting in your head four in and five out this is a really nice one to stretch out the lower back uh, and also just to open up and make our hips a little bit more supple okay so just another one breath sequence and then we're going to work our way up to a standing so using the chair to lift you up so grounding down on your feet and just pushing our sit bones up and walking our feet in and then turning our ankles out we're going to take a moment just to rest on the bolster with our forehead 
we're choosing to have our legs in a bit of a uh, pigeon toe just to stretch out along your back so while I'm in this position I'm not choosing to just let my belly drop out and again put that pressure on the lower back I'm drawing baby up and I'm allowing myself to hold and cradle the baby as far back as I can without straining just imagine you are also drawing up on your pelvic floor and there's a little bit of stability in there and maybe you've got a, a like a bit of tight pair of pants on and you're just trying to feel quite sturdy. You can pretend that you are clinching and drawing your thighs into one another but there's no actual movement there. And we're just, we're allowing our, our sit bones to just reach up while we're drawing up our lower, our belly as well. So there's this really real engagement here. We don't just have to be in these restorative poses and not do anything. We can we can still get that activation in our uh, muscles. So just walking yourself up, slowly bringing your head up, um, and make that the last thing that you do. So just as a way to get up, just bring your legs to your hips. Your stance is really wide. So we're going, uh, we're going to step back and we're going to have our leg in our knees here in between the middle of the chair. And we're going to use the chair to support us, but pretend that the chair is not there. This is really working your legs. Okay, and raising your right hand up now. And just feeling that strength that you're pushing down into your legs. And then imagine that you could just for a few seconds lift your hand on and off. Just to test that you really are using your legs. Breathing deeply. Inhaling as you come up. Twisting that back foot around and just stepping forward. We'll do the other side. So keep it a nice wide stance. That back foot's in a 45 degree angle and your big toe and your knee are in line with one another. You're going to drop your hand down and this is a variation of um, your uh, trikonasana, your triangle pose. You can either have your leg bent in the front here or you can straighten it. But try not to do any pulling around with your hips. So just allow them just to be quite centered. You can come down to your forearm if you want a deeper stretch or maybe you can go a bit further but don't push yourself. Only if you are familiar with yoga. Lovely. Alright, allow that back foot to lift up and twist around. Bending your leg and just stepping forward. Lovely. And we're going to ground down from our ankles, inhaling, raising our hands up. Again, just keeping your head looking straight in case you are feeling a little bit dizzy, drawing the hands back down in front. Stepping your foot back again, we're going to go into our Parvantasana, which is our forward bending leg strengthening pose. So just straightening both legs. And because of our pregnancy, we've got a wide stance. And we're going to imagine that we are closing everything towards the body. So really strengthening our pelvic floor. Placing our hands on our shoulders and just looking forward, just drawing the elbows back. Taking a deep breath in and just allowing our hips to tilt forward until... So we're leaning from your hips. So there's no uh, dropping out and allowing your lower back to be compromised. We're using our hips as they were intended. Till we get to a point where we've gone far enough and then we're dropping our head down. This is a really great way to sit and stay and feel comfortable and activating the legs at the same time. Not having to be too dynamic with things, but still feeling like we're strengthening our legs. So drawing 
our two inner parts of our thighs together without making too much movement but we're just imagining that they're coming into one another and then just walking back up lovely step up and then back wide stance again and a straight leg okay and we're coming up hands on hips and again nice wide stance keep on forgetting because I'm not pregnant anymore okay wide stance elbows drawn in tucked in and again just allowing yourself to move from the hips until we get to that point where we're probably pulling on our hamstrings dropping down and just drawing in our inner thighs to one another lovely walking ourselves up coming forward inhaling raising up and exhaling raising down so we're going to come to the center just for a few more uh, more strengthening dynamic and then we'll finish off with a bit of chair restoration so pulling your if you do have again if you do have any issues with your hips then have your feet in but we're just going to draw down again and allow your knees not to drape right over so you can't see your toes, you still want to see your toes. Allowing our knees to work their way to the back of the foot, to the little toes, but you still want to see them. Okay, okay interlocking your hands, drawing your index finger together, having a mudra which is activating the energy in our lower sacrum, lower chakra. And we're just going to allow the, the bottom just to fall out a little bit. So you're just sitting there and you're using your quads to engage. Taking a nice deep breath in now. Allowing the hands to come up. And exhaling, drawing the energy back. And just that baby comes back again. Inhaling, hands coming out. Uh, balance might be an issue as well as we go along so make sure that you don't have anything that you could fall on and hurt yourself okay just two more here and maybe you can go a little bit deeper that's fine you might have to be in some uncomfortable positions and stay in them for labor so we want to harness that that sensation of staying in something that's uncomfortable two more and coming out whenever or if it, there is any pain okay bringing your hands down to your heart space and maybe just settling there for a few moments feet walking in to one another and coming to your chair and we can use our bolster to sit on or a, quite a thick blanket and we're going to rest in this position popping now you can do cross-legged or you can do this virasana type position if your knees are okay and nice wide legs as well and we're going to settle down now you can incorporate other bits from other prenatal sequences if you want to go along and do a little bit more like maybe the sun salutation or something like that um, if your energy is really good but this one is focusing on doing a little bit of activation and then using this time to recoup in our rest restorative pose so just sitting in our forward bend while we're in Virasana so this is one way that we can choose to rest or if we have got some lower back aches and pains we can sit on our bolster allow our knees to come out you might have some extra towels or pillows over here if your knees uh, don't just rest down like that which is fine and also if you might just feel it's a little bit more comfortable okay so just getting a nice little stretch in the front there in the lower back dropping ourselves down and back to our breathing sequence 
of our five. Inhaling for four. And exhaling for five. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling, just two more. Five, four, three, two, one. And back to your normal breath. You can stay here for as long as you want, uh, maybe up to 10 minutes even. And each time you're staying here, you're allowing yourself to soften and release and relax as much as you can. You might want to put your head down on one side and then swap it around to the other side. Just have a play around with it. Um, but it is particularly good just to strengthen out through the lower back. Okay, walking back to the center. We're going to do a little closing breath sequence. Okay, bringing our hands to our heart space, just allowing ourselves to settle down. You might want to drop your head down slightly. And just taking a few moments to feel any gratitude or any feelings that help to complement yourself in your journey coming towards the end of your pregnancy and it's just the end of this phase of your pregnancy there's a whole another trimester to go and I urge you to look into the concept of the fourth trimester and how that nurturing and nourishing yourself continues on and this is in the hope that the next, so that's for 40, uh, 40 days. And that's in, in Eastern philosophy that is to have good health for the next 40 years. So it's well worth tuning in and getting as much health as you can. So for now, just taking a few moments to feel good about what you've achieved in that small time. Bring yourself back to your breath. Maybe this is the first time today that you've tuned into baby. Maybe baby's been moving a bit more or in any case there's going to be a beautiful flow of fresh blood supply circulating around, nourishing the body, nourishing the placenta. And just bringing our hands to our top of our head in honouring of any knowledge that we have just been part of, back down to the heart, bowing our head.